Howdy, I'm Denzel. During a time while working on the Animal Crossing series, I wanted the ability to stylize my subtitles in a way similar to Animal Crossing's. A bubble that distorts and scales to text. Turns out, according to this video from Hey guys, Casey Ferris here. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve. It's actually pretty simple to make. So come along on this journey through Resolve. In Resolve, Head over to the Effects tab and grab the Text Plus from the Titles tab and bring it into your timeline. If you're wondering about the difference between Text and Text Plus, Text is just a regular text element used mostly for simple titling, and Text Plus offers the same functionality but with more features, like allowing us to edit it further in the Fusion compositing space. But more on that later. If you click onto your text and open the Inspector tab, you'll see a bunch of options that we can change like scale and tracking and even this right on slider down here. And all of this is animatable by clicking on these little keyframe buttons. I'm gonna change my font to Nanito and the style as well as the color. Um, I don't think it's Animal Crossing accurate, but it looked similar enough to me. And it's also free, link in the description. Now to surround this text with a bubble, we're gonna be building that up here in the shading tab. And this is where a lot of magic is gonna happen. In here, we're given eight elements. You can think of these more as layers, each with their own unique parameters that can all be changed and even keyframed. Number one is our text. I'm not going to be changing anything in it, so we're just going to leave it and click on to layer two. I'm going to give this one a name and call it bubble one and enable it. This layer's default is a red outline, but we can change that down here in the properties. We're going to pick this third option and change the level from character to text, and this will then surround our text with a box. We can also do things like changing the width and height of this box with these sliders, add some rounding to the edges, and even change the color. But we can even edit more, like down here in the Positions tab, which lets us change its position. I'm going to scale it and move it around a bit, and then I'm going to go on and make the bottom half of this, which is basically the same thing, just now we're doing it for our third layer. So click it, name it, enable it, change the appearance and color. And oh, this one's default is like a drop shadow, with the X and Y here in the softness tab adjusting the effect. I don't really need it, so I'm just going to bring the blend for this down to zero and then further refine the two. And that's kind of it for like most of the effect. If you wanted to stop here, you totally could. You now have a scaling bubble. But if you wanted to add more effects, like some distortion, we're going to be doing that in the Fusion tab. If for some reason you don't see it, you can come up to the Workspace tab and the Show Page dropdown to enable or disable tabs at the bottom. We're going to select our text and then jump into Fusion. For anyone unfamiliar with Fusion, Fusion is a node-based compositing space built within Resolve. In here you can do additional compositing work like motion graphics and effects. And how it works is we have our text element and an output. If we disconnect this from the output, we won't see our text in the editor, because this wire passes one node's output to another. So in between here is where we'll be adding more effects. And we can still even edit our text in here as well by clicking on its node and working in the inspector. You're also going to need to know about the 1 and 2 viewer hotkey. If we click on a node and hit either 1 or 2, it will preview that node in our viewer. To add new nodes, we're going to hover our mouse over the open space and hit Control space to bring up our big list of nodes. And in the search bar, we're going to look for waviness. If you don't click on a node prior, it'll just add it to wherever your mouse was. You can quickly add it by clicking and dragging the node into the wire while holding Shift or just manually connecting it. Now if we hit space to play, it's all wavy now, but the effect looks super janky. We're going to bring the strength way down and same with the speed. Then we're just going to duplicate this node by hitting Control c and Control v and on this one we're just going to change the waviness type from vertical to horizontal, and then maybe change the phase. And that's going to give us a result that looks a little something like this. But in this case, I only want the bubble to be distorting, and I'd like to straighten up my text so it's easier to read. And we can do so by just layering the unaffected text back over top with a merge node. Control space search for merge, and then connect our text's output into our merge. And voila! If for any reason the text looks like it's behind, then you can click on the merge node and hit Control T. This just swaps which input is in front or behind. But look at it, it's pretty neat. I'm gonna do one last thing, which is add a transform node in between this wave and this merge node, so I can slightly scale up the bubble just a little bit, so we don't have any overlapping clipping. And that's it! And since all of this happens after the text, any changes that we make to it will still update. If you by chance wanted to add like a name tag, you'd still need to add it manually, and then move it to a new location every time you change the text. 
I sadly haven't found a way to make that move dynamically inside of Fusion here, but uh, what can you do? Resolve and Fusion can only solve so many problems. But congratulations, you're now a Resolve title making master. If you wanted to save this to reuse later, you can do so by enabling power bins in this unambiguous three dot button, and then just dragging this clip from your timeline into a folder here. And now it's saved and ready to be used wherever you need it. And the neat thing about power bins is that anything within a power bins folder now will be carried to any project you're working on within your project library. And that's it. Go forth and make things. If you found this useful, Patreon, subscribe, like, and comment, and check out some of the other videos. I've been me, you've been yourself, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching.